What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Colton Posey Fishing. Today we're out on beautiful Smith Lake. So, um, you know, I talked a while back about uh, running another boat and I ended up getting a Triton. Um, the Triton that I'm running is actually a 99 model. Um, it's a fairly new, uh, I mean, it looks like a fairly new boat. Uh, I just couldn't pass it up. It's a beautiful boat. Fish is good. Um, just really testing it out today, but I wanted to I wanted to talk to y'all and I get this question a lot about press, pressured fisheries, okay? So going to a lake that's been pressured. Smith Lake up here is a beautiful lake, is an outstanding lake. It's one of my favorite lakes to fish. Um, it gets a lot of pressure, uh, whether it's spring, summer, fall, winter. Uh, the colder months are even better up here uh, than any time. But pressured fisheries. So. I just got here, just run the boat, checking everything out, and I've got three rods up here. That's it. I've got three rods. I don't have rods everywhere or anything like that. I've got three rods. Fall, you need to remember bait. That's what they're chasing. Smith Lake, you've got the blueback heron, and you've got the threadfin shad, so you need to mimic them to the best of your abilities. It's been sunny all week. Uh, last night, we had a real big storm come through, uh, continued throughout this morning. So right now, it's somewhere around 10 o'clock. Um, but the three baits that I have up here on these rods, I have a jerk bait. Number one, dives to like four or five foot. Um, then I've got a topwater walking bait. We've got cloud cover. We've got wind. There's a little bit of ripple in the water. Should be perfect day for topwater. And then I've also got a little swim bait. Now, this swim bait is a 2.75 inch. Um rage swimmer it's a 2.75 inch rage swimmer with a 3.8 ounce smally crasher all-terrain head um, the reason i use a 3.8 ounce i can get it to go straight down real fast or i can make super super long casts with it so either way stay tuned this is something you don't want to miss all right so i'm gonna start out with this little swim bait here where I'm sitting on a little point it's not but uh the point itself is 44 foot deep so it's a it's a really really deep point but a lot of times what happens on these uh, pressured fisheries like this they these fish will go out and suspend um and I know a lot of guys they run the live scope and stuff now which is not bad live scope is awesome any kind of live sonar is amazing but uh, in a sense, the fish get to where they can feel that. So if you're fishing a um, if you're fishing a fishery that has had the crap beat out of it with guys running live scope and stuff like that, swap. Run your 2D sonar. Turn your sonar off. There's a lot of times that I didn't even run a sonar um, just because these fish get super used to it and they'll just quit buying what you're throwing um but what i'm doing here i started out over here on a point seen a few fish uh, on my graph not a bunch but i did see some um but i'm not looking to catch those fish they're really inactive they're suspended but i know there's more fish out in this cove so like i was talking about earlier we had that big rain come through a uh, big storm you can look at the banks and see where the waters run off the banks and stuff like that through the rock clay and all that um the main thing is what i'm trying to do is i'm gonna go back up in this cove it's a creek so i'm gonna go back up in this creek it's probably about 800 yards um and i'm gonna fish this creek all the way back until i find the fish there'll be a fish um a lot of times they'll push the bait up in these little pockets off to the side in this creek and a lot of times when we have these rains and stuff you have fresh water coming in from the rains and a little creek so in the back of this there's a little bitty branch that runs into it so more than likely what's happened is those fish have already or are, are on their way to push that bait in the very back of these creeks that's the reason i'm starting out here and i'm working my way back um so just keep just remember that when during especially during the fall and spring when you have these storms and stuff come through make your way towards the back of a creek um and fish it all the way out 
and see about what depth they're at. And well, the main thing's the depth. You want to figure out, you know, are they sitting in 15 foot? Or are they sitting in 20 foot? Or are they pushed up against the banks? If they're feeding, they're going to push these shad up against the banks. This is a big time um, spotted bass fishery. So these things like to stay out. They'll go out at like 25 foot and then the, like in these creeks and they'll sit there and stare straight up and wait um, and wait for uh, the bait to come by. When they do, they'll push them to the surface, push them to the bank or whatever they can get them up against. Sometimes docks. Um, clay's a big key uh, on this lake in particular. Um, so let's see here. Been throwing this swim bait around a little bit. Haven't seen anything follow it, no bait. So let's throw a top water and cover some water. And that's the main thing too this time of year you really really got to cover water make sure you're covering water don't sit in one spot too long um when it's cloudy like this top water is a great presentation to fool these finicky fish and get them to munch on shad uh you can fire them up with the top water most of the time if they bite the top water that's awesome because you're going to catch them off the top water for most of the day um but if they don't what a lot of people don't think about you've discovered the fish you discovered a bait you've discovered everything it's, it's one of those it's one of those things that uh i was talking about the last time nobody ever asked why why did i catch that fish why did that fish up come and try or why did that fish try to come up and you know eat the lure was it was it presentation was it color was it just what was it that's what you need to be dissecting the whole time once you get that stuff down you've got it you've got it you just keep on with your pattern uh they may swap up on you in the middle of the day but using lures like that little 2.75 inch swimmer and then i've got this walking bait right here it's a strike king sexy dog it's clear water minnow so it's not it does have a little bit of color to it it's got a little bit of purple a little bit of green um and all that it mimics thread fin and it mimics blueback herring really well but we've got this cloudy day so i figured the the clearer color will work now uh, with a little bit of dark mixed into it. But um, if you're throwing, you got to be careful throwing these clearer baits, especially on cloudy days. So that's the reason I put, if you'll look at the video, I had a feather hook on the back of this walking bait. 90% of the time when I'm fishing these walking baits, the fish never actually hit the bait itself. They hit the feather hook. That's what they're after. It looks just like a little bitty shad. Oh, missed one. A little bit in. But either way, um, fishing these pressured fisheries, that's what I wanted to talk about. We've talked about baits. We've talked about asking why and figuring out why you're catching them, so on and so forth. So baits and, uh, or pressured fisheries, I'm sorry. Most of the time, on a pressured fishery, they'll shut down on you when the boat traffic gets wild. Um, big tournament going on, a lot of pleasure, pleasure boaters, um, anything like that. A lot of times they'll shut down on you, and it's easy to get frustrated, and you shut down on them and give up. Always remember, I don't know how many times I'm going to say it, but as many times as I need to until somebody gets it. You want these fish on these pressured fisheries to react. You don't want them to chase. You don't want them to try to run your bait down and inspect it or anything like that. You want them to react to whatever you're doing. It's no different than me throwing something at you and you trying to catch it. <laughs> You may not know what it is or anything. It's just initial reactions to throw your hands up and catch it. You don't want to get hit with it. It's the same theory with bass on these pressured lakes. I've had a lot of success moving my baits quickly using smaller baits. Um, now, smaller isn't always better. Oh, we got one bowling right here. Uh, smaller isn't always better, but it can be. Uh, for certain instances when 
when these fish are pressured. Um, line diameter and stuff like that, I don't really get into all that unless it's a clear water lake like we're fishing here on Smith. Um, that can play a key. I've had it play a key before. Um, but really just moving your baits quickly. Uh, fall is a big time for that. These fish are going to be feeding like crazy on the shad getting ready for winter. So, so moving your baits in, a, in an erratic pattern, trying to get these fish to eat your baits, that's going to be a big key. But just always remember, you've got to match the hatch this time of year. These, uh, these uh, minnows and stuff that they're eating, the shad, um, if you're in the south, shad, um, that they're eating, they're going to be, most of them is going to be super tiny, but they're going to be eating huge bait balls of them. I mean, huge. So you want this thing, you don't want it to look like, you know, a, a shad that's that, that's that long. You want it to look like a shad, you know, or whatever size they're eating. That's where that feather hook and stuff like that comes into play. So just remember that. Just keep your stuff moving. Cover lots of water. Lots and lots of water. And it's frustrating. I guarantee you most most of y'all that ask me about the pressured fisheries and stuff, I guarantee you what most of y'all are doing, same thing that I used to do. You found fish and you're irritated because you can't get them to bite. Sometimes the fish just shut down. You're just not throwing what they want or they, they just don't want to eat. There's nothing you can really do about it. Um, you just got to keep, you just got to keep playing the game. Um, really, honestly, what I found, if I get on a school and I cannot get them fired up for nothing, let's say I've threw top water baits, flukes, um, top water flukes, spoons, everything, and I just can't get them to eat what I'm throwing. I'm going, I mean, I'm just moving. I'm moving. Just keep moving. That That's the struggle that a lot of people have. Um, is once you find fish, if they're not active, you can't get them to bite for nothing. And it doesn't mean that you can't come back to where those fish are. But for the time being, if they're not going to eat, you're, you're really just killing time. You need to get somewhere where they are eating. So just keep moving. And the key, a lot of the a lot of the keys too to all this is if you find a school of fish, like let's say I'm fishing this creek and I find a big school of fish and I wear them out or I know they're there, I'm going to look for something similar to this where there'll be fish and they may be active. Just because they're inactive in one creek doesn't mean they won't be um, active in another creek. So, you know, trying to mimic that and just keep present your lure in a way that mimics the bait fish. And that's the thing. You got to do a little bit of, you got to do a little bit of homework. Um, see what kind of baits, or not baits, but see what kind of forage they're eating on. If, if or what kind of shad and stuff they're eating on. If, they're, if it's mainly a thread fin fi or fishery, then you're going to want to throw lures that mimic the thread fin. Um, if it's gizzard, you know you want to mimic gizzard. If it's blueback, you want to mar uh, you want to um, uh, imitate the blueback. Um, and then do research on how these uh, how these shad and stuff act during whatever time of year it may be. So and, and you'll get an idea, and then you can present your bait in a way that mimics that. You'll get a lot more bites that way. So just remember on these pressured fisheries don't get caught up don't get caught up in one spot if you find fish good good you found them if they won't bite they won't bite there's nothing you can do about it you've got to keep moving or keep changing baits um, until you figure it out sometimes you just cannot get a school fired up to save your life it just happens um, don't get frustrated don't get flustered just say okay they're here tried this they won't bite let me go here which mimics uh where i'm at now and try that and eventually you'll either get them fired up or end up right back where you was at a good time when they are fired up so um and that's a big key a lot of the times too sometimes you just 
they're just not going to feed at that time. You may be there at 10 o'clock. They're not going to eat at 10 o'clock. But you come back at 3 and you smoke their tails. Okay? That's uh, it's just part of it. So, remember, on pressured fisheries, you want them to react. You want them to react. Remember that word, react. You're moving your bait quick. Now this is for fall, spring, summertime. Um, you want to move that bait quick. You don't want them to get a good look at it. You want to match the size of the bait. Whatever kind of bait they're eating. If it's crawfish, try to imitate the size of the crawfish that they're eating colors and everything. Shad, same thing. Run those, run those shad patterns. Um, looks like back up in here on this creek, We've got, uh, see the water level here too. The water level here is down about 13 or 14 foot. So the stuff that's usually in the water that they hold to is not in the water anymore. So a lot of these fish are just moving out and suspending. So um, that's one of the things that I'm trying to do with the top water is to get those fish that are suspended to show themselves. So if I have one come up and I catch one off this uh, walking bait, then I obviously know there's a fish there. But if I have one come up and it misses my bait, I still know there's a fish there. And then I can attempt to try and locate them and see what they're feeding on and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, just, just remember, locate the bait, you'll find the fish. Imitate the bait, you'll catch the fish. But you, sometimes you've got to imitate them to a key. You can't have one thing, you can't have one thing different. Or at least you gotta make it look um, exactly like the fish that they're feeding on. So, just remember, pressured fisheries, move. Move, 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 move. You stop, you're going to sit there and waste two hours in one spot when you shouldn't have wasted it. Fish the spot out and move. If you don't get any bites, get out of there. There's no reason to stay. Let's see if we can get us a, get us a couple fish. We about made it all the way back here to the back of this creek. Like I said, it's eight, about an 800 yard stretch, I guess. Maybe a little more. Um, what I was talking about moving we started at the beginning of it no bites um, so we're gonna make our way right back here to the very very back we'll see what happens So, trying to be quiet. I've I fished this spot before. A lot better luck, especially when I'm being quiet. But, um, off this bait. I haven't got a reaction strike off of a top water, and I haven't had one off of, uh, off of the little swim bait. So, I'll throw this jerk bait right here a little bit and just see if I can get one to react. Got the color a little bit different too. We got more white with some blue and all that good stuff in it.
Alright. So I'm not seeing anything follow it yet. So we'll make a couple more casts back here and then we're gonna get on out. I'm going to swap back to the swim bait and just see if running this right above or right below the surface will trigger a reaction by it. Right back here we ain't about eight foot deep. Low. Here's a good little fresh pile. No. My spinning setup that I have here, I've got um, 10 pound um, braided line the high vis and then I've got an eight pound fluorocarbon leader on spotted bass fisheries I really don't like to go past the eight pound um, mark just because sometimes they get a little finicky on these clear lakes and can't get them to eat nothing so all right so this right here is a key example. Fish this whole little cove out. Hadn't got a single bite. Hadn't had no bait follow. Had one bull on the bank, uh, which you couldn't see it really good. It could have been a gar or anything else. But uh, either way, no bites. No bait following my bait, nothing. So now I'm gonna get out of this cove. I'm gonna go fish some main lake stuff didn't have no luck in the creek in the pockets of the creeks or anything like that i want to fish the main lake points once i get done with that either i find fish or i don't if i don't find fish then i'm going to move to pockets on the main lake see if they push these fish or these bait fish up in these pockets um in the main lake so uh either way i appreciate y'all tuning in i'll see you here in just a second now we're at another part this is a main lake point so i've caught a lot of fish here before i got in some rough waves so let's set my trolling motor graph back up here but uh either way um we're on a main lake point now so that's what i was kind of telling y'all earlier transition 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 so i knew that they wasn't going to bite uh, back there after I got done fishing it so there was no point in just hanging there all day obviously there's fish in there somewhere um, some of my biggest bags that I've caught up here on this lake has come out of that uh, little cove there saw a few fish on my graph nothing maybe one or two when I first pulled up uh, but they were towards the main lake the further I went back up in the creek no bait nothing chasing my bait the bait wasn't following my bait uh, so Pressured fishery, no cove bites. When I say cove bites, I went all the way back up in that creek and that cove, no bite. Um, and I'm gonna show you something here in just a second that's real strategic that may may help some of you, may not. Um, it, this is just my experience doing this. Um, but um, we've got this point coming out. Most of the time people will position their boats uh, in front of the point and cast to the shallow and bring it out deep. I'm gonna do it a little bit different this time. And the reason for that is we've got this cloud cover. I'm sure this spot right here has been fished to death. So I'm gonna put my boat pretty close to the bank here. Uh, I mean, obviously I don't want it rubbing up against the bank, but I'm gonna get it pretty close to the bank and I'm gonna cast out deep and bring my bait to the shallow. Um, so we'll see how that works. Here in just a minute, we'll work, work this spot 
for just a little while and then we will skedaddle if we don't catch anything. But on my way up to this point, I didn't stop dead on the point. I'm working, I'm going to work this side, the main lake side of this point right now. Um, we'll fish the point, fish all the way around the point. Don't get no bites on that. Then we're going to move out, go all the way around the point, and then work up into the cove, going back up in there to, uh, to that little creek. See if the fish are positioned anywhere different. Now, if you're very, very familiar with your electronics, you can skip all this <laughs> and uh, run your electronics. The only issue with that is um, a lot of times when the fish, on pressured fisheries, um, see the boats and all that stuff pull up on them, they'll shut down on you. They'll go out suspend, they won't hit nothing. Um, so you just gotta be careful with that. Sometimes the best thing to do is put a trolling motor down and fish. Sometimes that is the best thing you can do. So. I'll tell you what though, this um, this Triton, it's a um, Premier 180 or TRX 180 or something like that. But either way, um, this is the first time I've run a Triton. This is a 99 model, so it's one of the older models. I believe it's built a lot better than a lot of the newer ones. Um, maybe built the same, I don't know. Um, but man, I've never been in one, but it'll handle some rough water. Um, we got this wind blowing up here today, and then we've got um, um, we've got this wind blowing here today, and then we've also got uh, some pleasure boaters out here. I, I don't really know why <laughs> it's so close to fall. Um, so it's getting a little cooler. It, it feels good today after that front moved out. But either way, I'm making a super long cast over this point, and I'm going to run this bait a hundred miles an hour like it's nobody's business. Like I said, I want these fish to react. I don't want them to, you know, run up on it or swim up on it and then sit there and stare at it and wondering what in the world is this thing. So I see right here on my graph, got some bait, which is good. We didn't have that in that creek a minute ago. So... Oh, oh, he missed it. Yep, there's a fish. Let's see here. All right, here's the thing too. This bait that I'm seeing, they're not, not deep. They're not super shallow either. They're suspended pretty close to the top here. I'm going to throw, want to throw this walking bait a little bit more. See if I can get these fish move on this i know with the bait here there there'll be some bass around can't get them to bite this in just a second i'm gonna swap um that little bitty swim bait there now i made a cast way out on the end of the point that's the key too you want to make super long casts don't throw it 10 yards from the boat um, at times you want to cast it as far as you absolutely can then at other times you uh you don't want to but let's see here we're sitting i got the boat sitting in 30 i'm throwing over uh 25 30 foot so these fish like i said they're kind of or the the bait that i saw not the bass i haven't seen any bass yet on the graph but um, the bait that I'm seeing, they're kind of suspended between, so here we got 33 foot. They're kind of sitting at about the eight to nine foot range, 10, somewhere around in there, eight to 10, we'll just say that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm gonna let it sink for about three seconds. And then I'm just gonna slowly bring it back over the point, but I'm gonna work my way back up over here where I was turned back around, face on the outside of the point face towards the outside of the point i'm not on the outside of the point but i'm gonna get close to the bank again uh you'll see here in just a second 
and then I'm going to copy what I just did with that walking bait, but I'm going to do it with the swim bait and just see if I can get any fish to get active. Alrighty. See this, this too is a little clay bank. So it's clay rock, comes out, it's got a little drop on. So these fish, or these, the bait is suspending right around that drop off. All right. Now, too, I do need to say that fishing where I am fishing, this is a highland reservoir. This is not a river system or anything like that. So fishing a river system is going to be a little bit different um, than fishing this highland reservoir. Um, like I said earlier, they've drew this lake down big time. Big, big time. Now I'm working my way straight out to the end of this point. Alright, now we're at 50 foot deep. So we're going to look and see. See anything? I'm not seeing anything on my outside of this point. I'll tell you what, a lot of times on these blueback herring fisheries, what sucks is these things, they'll go MIA on you. Be on them one day. Which I hadn't fished up here in a while. It's been it's been probably about two weeks. And when I did come up here, I was just peddling around. Maybe had like two hours. Um, we caught several fish. But um, kind of mimicking what I was doing that day. Which this day is a little bit different. There's no sunshine. It's uh, super cloudy. A good bit of wind. It's not calm at all. A lot of times, at this time, when it gets like this, it's when it kind of becomes difficult because the fish will start moving around a lot more on you. And here's the thing too, like this being a blueback herring lake, threadfin shad, gizzard shad, um, bait like that, they, on cloudy days, will move closer to the surface. So you'll catch most of your bass in the upper water column. Blueback herring do the exact opposite. They'll go deep. Um, it's just their mindset, the way they do stuff. But um, either way, so here we got a ditch coming up right here. They may be pushed up in this ditch but um so they'll do the exact opposite that you know your thread fin and your gizzards and things like that'll do so just always remember that uh, especially like where i'm fishing right here there's some thread fin right there on the end of this point the fish that are that may be on this point they may not be any um did have something blow up over there a minute ago uh on that top water bait but um uh, either way hadn't saw an abundance on the graph uh, so those fish who typically feed on the blueback heron they're probably not they're not going to be um, you know active to want to eat uh, the lures that I was throwing at them at that time so if I can't get the blueback heron bass that or the bass that cha chase the blueback herring. If I can't get them active, then I'm going to swap these fish that are chasing the thread fin. And typically they're going to be in your little pockets like we're coming up on um, right back here in front of me. So, uh, 
but I'm not seeing any activity. I'm not seeing any birds. Uh, so we're going to actually let this sink for just a second. And we're going to run it back here. We're going to move to another area in just a second. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. These pressured fisheries like this. I mean, I've spent, I don't know, however much time y'all have watched. Literally, that's how much time I spent going through that creek. That's how much time I spent on this point right here. No bites. I'm moving. I'm done. I'm done with this area. I will not be back to this area unless I see them much. So now we're going to move to a different area. And the reason I'm doing this, I'm trying to show you don't get caught up um, to just sitting in one spot. Also, too, I do want to mention uh, before I forget those um, the graphs that I'm running on this boat right here in particular is um, um, Lawrence units. I hadn't run Lawrence in a couple years. I do like Lawrence. I mean, all the fish finders are good. Um, I prefer hummingbirds. That's just what I've run most of my life. Um, but either way, uh, I'm going to do a video on these electronics here. i got to get used to working these new units through the new FS9s. So I've got to get used to them. Uh, and then I'm going to do a video on that. Hopefully help all you Lawrence guys out. So stay tuned. Uh, we're going to move to another spot and see what happens. All right, everybody. So there's th three... Um, three baits that I really like to use on uh, Highland Reservoirs and stuff that has, uh, or that's really, really pressured. Um, one of those baits, especially during the fall, is a fluke. So, this fluke right here, it's a crazy chrome color. Uh, it's a Zoom uh, Super Fluke, but um, it's got a lot of chrome and it mimics thread fin shad really, really, really well, especially the small ones. Um, and what I do is I get a three alt Gamakatsu super line hook, and I just simply Texas rig it. That's our super deep throat hook, not super line. Um, and the reason that I do that, that long extra barb helps catch those fish that are barely taking the bait. So, uh, and the setup that I like is a six foot nine medium action rod. Um, if you have a composite rod, that's just as good as any kind of any kind of limber rod. Um, the second one is a top water bait. So this is going to go back to those thread fin again. Um, so this bait is the nude color. It's a Strike King Sexy Dog. Um, and what I do is I take the treble hooks off of it. I swap to the Gamakatsu uh, size six EWGs. The reason I do that, the hook is smaller, but it has that extra wide gap in it, and it, the hookup ratio is 100 times better. One of the key features that I do is I take the back hook off, and I put a size 6 feather hook um, on that also. Nine times out of ten, when I catch fish off this bait, they're coming off that uh, feather hook there. I like throwing um, anything below 7 foot, or, I mean, you could run a 7 foot if you wanted to, um, but like a 6 foot 9 uh, moderate action rod, perfect for top water. The key to a good top water rod is you want it to be lightweight, obviously, because you're going to be using it like crazy. But the butt in there. So if you look on this one rod, so right here, see how short these are? The fluke and then the uh, top water rod, it helps when that bait is going up under your arm. That way this is not hitting the back of your arm and wearing you out, okay? So that's a big, big key feature to a top water rod. Now the third thing that I like to throw, especially if I'm trying to match the hatch, is a swim bait. So you have all different kinds of swim baits and use it depending on what the bait's eating at that time. Um, sorry adjust the camera a little bit but uh depending on what the fish are eating at that time this is a 2.75 inch rage swimmer okay and i'm throwing it on a 3.8 all, all terrain smally crusher uh swim bait head i'm throwing this specific for the spotted bass they bite it better it's got a smaller hook smaller profile bait that's the type of bait that they're eating smaller profile this mimics um the herring real well it mimics the thread fin also so um but i like throwing it also 
on like a seven foot uh, moderate action spinning rod. Eight pound test is what I throw on any clear fishery um, when it comes to that stuff. So either way, I don't have a whole lot of battery, so um, I'm gonna have to kind of cut all this short. But um, I've been out here filming most of the day, hadn't really caught many fish or anything, but I've had a lot of blow ups, a lot of mess, a lot of this overcast is messing this stuff up, which is okay. That's part of the game. But if you're gonna fish, if you're gonna fish any kind of pressured fishery, the number one thing you gotta remember is to constantly move. So uh, I made a mistake today. I sat on one spot, had fish everywhere jumping, couldn't get them to bite, but I still sat there even though I ignored um, what I was supposed to be doing. So that is what happens to us a lot of times. We get caught up in the moment, forget, hey, look, these fish are not gonna, they're not attempting to, uh, they're so keyed in on what they're eating that what you're throwing is not even close to what they want. So uh, a lot of times you either got to make adjustments or move. Most of the time I move. Today I didn't. Wasted a lot of my battery, but it is what it is. Um, just remember, on these pressured fisheries, smaller baits mash the hatch uh, as much as you can. You may have to go up in size if the hatch is bigger than um, you know what you're throwing. So you got to match the speed, match the depth, and so on and so forth. These fish today were pushing the shad up to the top and boiling them on the surface. I just couldn't get a reaction by that level. Um, sometimes it just goes like that. But either way, just remember, constantly move this time of year. Don't get caught up in one spot like I did, okay? You'll waste part of your day. It's not good. But guys, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Share the videos. It helps me out a whole lot. I appreciate it. See you next time.